See, I was in this college and I was supposed to take a seminar on uh, uh, tissue fixation, which is a histopathology. But my faculty, uh, his name is uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar. Okay, what he said, we need to keep the minimum slides. You know, whenever we say seminar, they will go with 50, 70 slides. But he said, the least slides you need to keep and you need to explain. So that, uh, obviously with less slides, less content, and you need to engage them. And uh, I came up with this one, okay. Uh, I, this is my first presentation uh, of that semester. So I was supposed to take tissue fixation. Then I realized that uh, there is some interesting story behind this uh, tissue fixation. So what is tissue fixation means? Any idea? What is tissue fixation? What is the purpose of fixing a tissue? To preserve the tissues, right? Why we are preserving tissues? To study their microanatomy under the microscope. To study the anatomy of the tissue under the microscope, right? So, yeah, uh, I just want to tell you a beautiful story about a fixation. So, there is a, a daughter. So, I think in the center you can see her. So, I will show uh, this one. So this is uh, Miss uh, Rosalind Lombardo, a very beautiful daughter, right? She's very beautiful. And she's the daughter of a, a very, you know, an educated father. Her father, I forgot his name, something Lombardo, okay? So what, uh, Williams Lombardo or something. So what happened to this uh, father? One, one bad day when he woke up uh, at the age of two years, he lost his uh, beloved daughter. You know, she is her, his goal, and he is not ready to accept that. He is not ready to ask, uh, accept that she is no more, and he don't want to, you know, say goodbye to her. A very very painful situation to this father. So this is the kid, I guess. Uh, this is the father and mother. So what his father did is, he is a by profession, he is an embryologist, and he knows these museum techniques, this uh, fixation, and he approached. Uh, the, one of the famous uh, um, embalmists. Embalmist means they are the one who will try to preserve dead bodies. Okay, have you heard about uh, taxidermy? Taxidermy means, you know, have you seen in the museums you will see a lion, a real lion, <coughs> but they preserve the actual lion meat. Okay, they, they preserve the actual lion skin and they stop the, some uh, cotton and they maintain the realistic features of the lion. So he thought that. He is ready to make her daughter mummy, a mummy. Okay, he, he thought of preserving her daughter. Okay, and what happened? So he went to this uh, one uh, um, uh, histopathologist, okay, by profession, and this uh, histopathologist took some chemicals in such a way that he, you know, now this became a matter of emotion. He cannot do a science, it should be done with some, you know, love. So he started working with his all knowledge. There is no ChatGPT, there is no Google 200 years ago. It's only boring books and libraries, right? So he did something that is really interesting. And I will show you one picture now. This is Rosalind Lombardo now. She is so well preserved that even today you can see her, uh, you know, like my son's cheeks, okay? Chubby cheeks, you can see the chubby cheeks of Rosalind who is 200 years old. You just say this is 200 years old preserved mummy and how well she is uh, preserved by the Lombardo, you know, uh, the family of Lombardo. Isn't it an interesting? Yeah. So this is what we can do with science and with a bit of passion. And some interesting sh story about Rosalind Lombardo, she is also called as the sleeping beauty. No one, you know, people who came there thinking that this is last week's dead body. Maybe she, she died recently. Whenever they are seeing the year that this is 200 years old, they are surprised. And another interesting thing about Rosalind Lombardo is, she will open her eyes and close her eyes, uh, you know, periodically. She is also called the, you know, sleeping beauty. Uh, that effect happening because of some optical illusion, okay. So, there is some liquid, so light will bend in a liquid. So, Yearly changes, you know, equinox, light changes. So you can see her light, slight eye movement. Okay, that's not real. She is not a ghost. Ghosts are not there. Keep in mind. You know what I will do to my son? Whenever, you know, my wife, she say, uh, you know, baby is crying, don't switch off the light. I used to keep him in the dark room. Now I, uh, you know, I maintained that dark is nothing. Now he is not afraid of dark. She is not crying when he is going to a dark room. 
No, he is even smiling and he is giggling. He is doing. You know, no, it became a fun activity to him. Why I said this? Because you know, all fears is just our perception. If you think uh, once a subject is tough, it is tough. If you think hematology is a piece of fecal, then it is simple. It depends on you how you are, you know, receiving it. If you think it's simple, it's simple. Most of you think that uh, the term steady learning is a tough thing. You you are learning each and every day, each and every time when you are scrolling a Facebook feed. You all are carving for knowledge. You you all need knowledge. If not academic, maybe some you know basics. But still, we all learners. Every second we are learning, and you need to be have that same enthusiasm on the right things rather than uh, you know Instagram. I hate Instagram by the way. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Rosalie Lombardo story is very nice, right? Yeah. Then uh, coming back to the histopathology, uh, you know. Preserving bodies is not a new science actually. This is one of the ancient tradition where humans started doing. I don't know why humans felt to preserve themselves. But that isn't it interesting? Can you able to see a dead body in an empty room? Alone? No, right? But that is what they I don't know why they got this passion towards death. I think I think that they, they don't feel afraid of death. And that is there for, you know, very years back onwards. And I want to show you a civilization that took this uh, uh, fixation techniques to the, next, to the next level. Okay. Can you able to believe a body preserving for two to three thousand years? Eight thousand years preservation. Is it possible to preserve a body for eight thousand years? And that's what these people did. If you think pyramid is a small thing, you just imagine the size of humans. This is humans and that is pyramid. And they built this entire pyramid for preserving a dead body. That means they are very serious about fixation. They are very serious about preservation. So this is mummification and there is the, the entire pyramid uh, built for Ramses actually, that is King Ramses, there is a pair of, okay, pair, pair of, uh, pair of, yeah. So this is King Ramses, even today we can see King Ramses tattoos on the hand and he has a beautiful eyelashes, they match up to him, I don't know why, you know, but you can see his uh, eyebrows, you know, he's still intact, you can see his skin and that is the beauty of uh, preservation. And that is what you are learning in your subject. Can you able to preserve a fro frog, if not humans? Can you able to preserve a cockroach at least? You don't even think about those positive aspects of your study actually. Can you able to preserve beautiful, uh, you know, uh, ants, some cockroaches? They are beautiful actually. Right? Yeah, you think about the possibilities that you can do or you can contribute in this, in your domain. From your little hands, from your little knowledge, what you can contribute. When they did these masterpieces, can't you able to preserve an ant? Not an uh, no, ant, a ant. Okay. Yeah, you know, fine. Um, then I thought of telling my own personal experience with fixation. Uh, you know, I studied in a government college, actually, this is my college. You know, my entire college is this D7 building, that's it. Okay. And there they are running even MBBS courses. Okay. Now they built other their blocks. But anyway, this is where I studied. Uh, you know, we used to respect our teachers in such a way that we are afraid of them. Too much. And that I am not seeing here anyway. Uh, why I am studying, uh, why I am saying this because you know, I used to study uh, in my school, I studied in a uh, Christian school. So there is this one, there is a book, I encountered a book called What is Life? So it was a very beautiful book there explaining about evolution, how life originated on planet Earth. And I came across a, you know, some stories like uh, Frankenstein experiments. You know, what he is trying to do is, this person want to study about electricity in the clouds. So he, he made a kite and a copper wire to the kite, you, you just imagine. And he is expecting that some lightning will hit the kite and can he receive any electricity. Obviously he is no more today because of same experiment. But uh, what he, <laughs> yeah, 
but uh, what, you know, during this process, what he understood is, whenever he is, uh, you know, flying a kite in a stormy uh, weather, his cage started, you know, uh, standing like this because of that static electricity. And he is wondered, and he want more. Uh, you know that uh, one day his dream come true. Anyway, uh, yeah. But uh, yes, these are some fascinating experiments done. You know. Uh, 5 to 6 years, 600 years ago. Okay, very interesting. And uh, see this. People started understanding human anatomy. They started understanding what is human. Okay. Then there is one a really beautiful experiment done by people. So what they did is, they took a dead body. They thought electricity has some energy, but they don't know what is it. They thought that that is some soul. Because you can't see it, but if you touch it, game over. Electricity, I mean, right? So what they did, they took a dead body, they removed the head of the dead body and they kept two wires, you know, one wire to the body and other wire to the hand. You know, what happened suddenly in this experiment? Very interesting experiment. You know, the hand started lifting like this. The hand started shaking when they are keeping electricity to a body that is with no head. So what they thought is, maybe we can bring back the life and the life is electricity. Maybe life is just an electricity. If you, you know, maybe the batteries are uh, uh, over, keep a new batteries, he will be alive. Okay, they thought humans are just, uh, you know, toys. So they started understanding electricity and there is one interesting uh, experiment by this scientist, I forgot his name. So what he did, he took a frog legs, he kept it and frog legs started jumping. Okay, very, very interesting experiments doing that by them. Then they came, a, you know, a very you know, celebrity, um, ghost, we already know. You know who is that Franklin Stein ghost? Uh, there is a dead body. The idea in this fictional story is you will keep electricity to the dead body, and this dead body will start walking, and it will it will become a robot actually. I can start cleaning my room with the robot. Keep two wires to the robot with some battery pack, and it will do. It will obey my rules, right? Yeah, that is what this Franklin Stein uh, robot is all about. No, you know, right? This one. These two electrodes are that, so they, are, they, they made this uh, fictional uh, creature. Okay, Adam's family, if you know cartoon. Okay, yeah. So you will get a, a soulless robot that can do your daily activities, right? So that is Frankenstein's monster. You know, uh, why I'm saying all this? Because when I went to my anatomy museum first time, you know, what I was doing is my ma'am, my anatomy ma'am saying that, uh, Dr. Presenna, okay, or uh, anatomy ma'am. What she said, she, every day she is keeping that anxiety that tomorrow you will see bodies. Tomorrow I will show you dead bodies. I will show you heart. But she is not taking us and it is almost eight months and we are curiously waiting for that day. Meanwhile, what I did, I got my summer time, summer vacation. No, I went to the like, uh, this, uh, this a hunter's lab and I took one of the skeleton, okay. This is what I was doing, you know, I, I still it actually for a brief period of time. I took an actual skull, okay, I keep in my room and I started studying the skull and all, you know, there are many holes, there are many fossas, there are many sutures in the skull. Yeah, you know, that level passion is not there nowadays. I'm not afraid of the skull. My mom came and she, she you know, yeah, first uh, I said her to keep uh, close her eyes and I give her a coconut. She thought it's coconut, then she dropped it. Anyway, his jaw cracked because of my mom. Anyway, yeah, this is this is the enthusiasm you must have, right? Yeah. Then what happened? Ah, uh, yes, Shubham. Yeah, Bidi Chauras, yeah, Shambhalingam, the same Shambhalingam I'm referring even today. Chaurasya part 1, 2, 3, head, limbs and the thorax, no? Yeah, uh, fine. Russell Wilson, see uh, how I'm studying, I have a table on my, uh, you know, uh, timetable on the wall, there is a DNA model, right? Yeah, so one day what happened? So uh, we went to this uh, actual hunter's lab, uh, inside a uh, uh, mortuary actually, hunter's lab, uh, anatomy dissecting lab. So ma'am said, today we are going, today is the day. We all are happy, actually our batch, batch is only 17 uh, students, okay, a very small batch. What happened? All the girls were going first. So I was run uh, behind everyone. Ma'am is back, okay? And just assume, I thought that there will be a bench with some organ and we will dissect the organ, okay? I opened the lab, I entered inside. They are coming still. I'm the only person in the lab. At that time, I have this Samsung 
first generation phone 2 gb rom okay 512 ram 32 gb rom okay 32 gb that small phone i map strictly said we should not take photo you know i went to the lab and i took photo and i was surprised first of all you know i was surprised seeing by seeing our own lab that the lab has an entire row of dead bodies okay you just imagine this is very big lab from here to there that corner okay i was i was yeah i was just sup, surprised okay this is yeah this is very nice to me you know immediately what i came to know you know then we are supposed to work on one male and female cadavers these are uh, 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 i think 7 years old cadavers uh, we didn't pay for the cadavers they only paid uh, to bring these cadavers to us uh, yeah so we studied uh, uh, where is that uh, we, we removed his femoral artery from here and we studied his head actually. Okay, we are studying his brain and all that femoral artery to heart. Uh, very interesting. When all my, you know, they are busy with understanding these things, I was searching for an electric socket actually, you know, nearby. Because I just want to keep an electric wire to the dead body. Will it really do that uh, movement or not? Okay, that's very interesting this. Uh, then we started studying anatomy of one particular person. Uh, this, this person's head we removed. It is almost one and a half hour practical, okay? Uh, we need to drill it, we need to remove the skin, we need to drill here uh, pro properly. Yeah, uh, I will show, you know, very, very nice experiences. See, I worked on him actually. This is my cadaver, okay? We, we all worked on it. Very interesting. There is this stenoprium asteroid and I was surprised when you tear a body, you will see there actually we all are, uh, you know, gym bodies only. You know, stenoprium asteroid means this one. This is stenoprium asteroid uh, muscle, very important for your uh, uh, neck turning. Okay, very interesting, I was surprised. I, I didn't expect this to be this big. And there is this, uh, uh, I call it a maxillary valves, very interesting. Yeah, I think so this is part one of the story. I will continue later. Thank you very much. I will discuss later.